So we're back, it's after the snow. We're talking about snowfall, episode nine last night, departures. Uh, this, this is Dave Mays and uh, my partner, Freeway Rick Ross, here to talk to y'all about snowfall and, and everything else going on. Yes, yes, yes. What up, Dave? What's going on, Rick? It seems like these times be too long, man. Yeah. I, I, I be wanting to do this more often. Yeah, yeah. We know we got <laughs> we got we got to you know build it up, then we can start doing it a few days a week. No know? doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Got to keep spreading the word out there, building our our fan base up. Yes, yes, yes. I had a wild weekend this week too, man. A lot of, a lot of action in my life. Okay. It's like I'm living, I'm living a, a, a movie all over again, man. Uh, last Thursday in Atlanta, King of Diamond off the change, man. Let me tell you, do you know that they charge $125 to park your car at the King of Diamonds, man? What? I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> I haven't been there in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> $125. They, they making a killing off that. Man, it was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Ran into Little Buckhead there, uh, DJ Jelly. He he showed up, you know, the girls was on the pole, man, and uh yeah. he was off the change. Jelly, yeah. He was yeah. off the change, man. You, you gotta stop by there when you go to Atlanta, Dave. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, and then um and so I leave there, man, I go to San Antonio to the Ryan Garcia fight, the return to Ryan Garcia. Packed house, fifteen thousand people showed up, man. It was it was crazy. Uh it took two hours to get out of the parking lot. And, uh, man, it was just, oh. yeah, I just had a wild weekend this weekend. Oh, man. Hopefully, they, hopefully they didn't charge you $125 there, too. No, it was only 40 bucks to park at, at, the, <laughs> uh, at the Alamo Dome. Um, but it was packed. It took two hours to get out. I would have rather paid the $125, let me out in, <laughs> in 10 minutes. <laughs> so how, how were the fights? The fights was good, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people saying, you know, that Ryan's not ready for the big league yet. Uh, me, myself, I think he, he did a pretty good job. Uh, you know, it's hard to fight guys who are not trying to win. And I think the guy that he was fighting uh, didn't come to win the fight. You know, he just came to survive and get his check. So uh, those are some of the hardest fights to fight. And, and I think Ryan did a pretty good job. You know, uh, uh, he couldn't get the guy out. Like I said, the guy was holding him too much, uh, uh, ran around the ring a lot. Uh but Ryan got a big fan base, man. That guy is 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 really his fan base is, is bananas. I think he got like eight million th followers uh, uh, on Instagram, and uh, they really came out and showed support for him uh, at the Alamo Dome. Man. Nice, it was wonderful. Nice. And you were down there. Did you get to um, meet with some other fighters you you're looking to work with? Or yeah, yeah. You know, I went down there with Gabe uh, Gonzario and. Uh, too bad he got the loss. He lost to Shane, uh, Shane Mosley Jr., uh, who looked fantastic, you wow. know, uh, um, from the last time I saw him fight. I haven't saw Shane fight in about seven, eight years, uh, but he's got a new trainer. He's working with Bone Adams, who was, uh, I'm finding out, one of the top trainers in, in the game, and they really uh, uh, really got him looking good, man. He, he looked like a total different guy from the last time I saw Shane Mosley, he got some pretty big shoes to fill, though. You know, Shane Mosley Senior, you know, was 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 a uh, was a world champ, and uh, uh, I don't know if he was an undisputed world champ, but he was definitely a world champ. He won the belt from uh, Oscar De La Hoya, yeah. and uh, his son is following in his footsteps. You know, I think I think the grandfather fought, uh, then then the, uh, the 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 daddy fought, and now uh, Shane Mosley Junior is is is, is following in the footsteps. So. Uh, very, very exciting. I met a couple couple young fighters down there too, uh, 15 and 16 years old, already turned pro, 3 and 0. And, and these are some of the guys, these are the guys that I really want. I really want to work with these guys right here. These guys here are going to be the new money makers in this game. Uh, they are the future of boxing. And uh, I met with uh, Rick Nunez and, and Rob. Uh, man, he was off the chain. I was already sitting front row, right? I was sitting front row, ringside. They came and got me, took me up to the suite, you know, like, oh, man, we got food. We got everything. They had pizza, chicken, and just, just all kind of food. And, and I'm like, man, I'm vegan. <laughs> right, I'm about to say, you, you can't eat all that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the thought, it was the thought that counted. Right, you know, I, I, felt, right. I felt special. You know what I'm I saying? Like, 
I know the <laughs> feeling when, when people take you somewhere and they, oh, there's a big buffet. And I'm like, man, I can only eat one thing out of that. <laughs> if, 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 if that. Yeah, if but it that. was a thought that counted, you know, right. uh, uh, I really felt special there. And, and, and I, I look forward to going back to San Antonio. Also, I ran into to, to one of my guys, kids, Austin and his dad. They were there. Uh, so it, it was it was just a big party, man. We had we had a great time. Uh, we went to a, a, a club after the fight. Uh, club was just jam packed. It was also a, a Mexican holiday that, that that weekend too. So hmm. I mean, the town was just buzzing, man. Uh, great time in San Antonio, man. You got to go to one of those fights. Uh, the one you really want to go to, they say, is a Canelo. They say he packs out a football stadium, sixty thousand people. So. You got to go to one of the fights with me, Dave, yeah. man. Yeah. Matter of fact, it. Canelo's going to be fighting in Vegas soon. That's going to be a that's going to be a big one. Okay. Well, let's make a plan. I'm with it. I I I've been to a number of fights over the years, not not too many in in a while, but uh I did go to one uh in Atlanta with um what's uh, his name? Jay Prince's fighter. Um Prince got caught quite a few fighters. Uh yeah. uh Sean um What's his name? Stevenson. Yeah, yeah. Shakur yeah. Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson. I seen, I seen yeah. him fight down in Atlanta, not in like last year. He got a big fight coming up too. Okay. He, he has a really big fight coming up. Um, I think they're going to unite the belt, so that's going to be big for him. A lot, a lot, a lot of things. A lot of good things are going on in boxing. I mean, boxing is is really picking back up, you know. And uh, I, I'm kind of making my waves, man. You know, I hooked up with the the guy who runs the Instagram for the Zone, so. Uh, we can get tickets to the zone fights from now on, Dave. Okay, so you okay. let me know if the zone is doing it. We in there, man. Okay. And and yes, thinking sir. about the fights, man, I, I'm surprised that 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 Snowfall didn't put any fights in into into that thing because the fights used to be exciting, man. You know, I went to the Sugar Ray Leonard fight and uh, uh and when he fought Marvin Hagler and uh uh Michael Spinks fight when when he beat uh Larry Holmes. You know, it was some, was some big fights in there, and 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 they didn't implement any of that in, in the game, man. And I, I was wondering why, you know, because well, you know, Dave, I already told you already that that so far in this in this TV series, I haven't saw any real exciting fun stuff. You know, it's been a lot of uh, uh, violent stuff and 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 trickery and and crossing and and double crossing mm-hmm. and. But but no fun stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, where when is the fun stuff gonna take place? You know? Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe they maybe they'll figure it out by this last season. But um, before we get into the show, yeah, I'll just bring everybody up to speed. I'm I'm in a different spot. I'm back home in Washington D.C. It's my my hometown. Born and raised here, and uh, came down to see the family, and. Uh, I'm going to do another podcast this evening. I'm going to be interviewed uh, on uh, Kurt Bone's new podcast. Um, a lot of a lot of people probably heard of Kurt Bone. He's a legend here in in, in the D.C. area. Um, the guy that was uh, down with Rayful Edmond back in the '80s and uh, early '90s, and then uh, when Kurt. Kurt got, you know, some some jail time, but he came home in the late 90s and he's been doing uh, a lot of stuff here for the community for for years now, uh, as well as gotten into like events and fashion and different things like that. So um, he just launched a pretty interesting new podcast and uh, I'm going to I'm going to sit with him tonight and record that. So hopefully y'all can check me out uh on on bones podcast in, in the next couple of weeks um so rick i know you i mean you told me before that you you had had a little bit of dealings with with ray for edmund yeah i remember when 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 he first started coming to la uh you know one of one of my guys uh one of my guys was working with, with rafer and and he brought him out well, well really he really was uh one of my one of one of the females that worked with me a Goldie, who was in the book. Well, Goldie was was Melvin's girlfriend uh, uh, early on in the game. You know, where, where when he was really young, Melvin was young. You know, and she bought him a Cadillac. You know, she took care of him. <laughs> it's one of those type of relationships. You know, with a 
the older woman got a young guy, you know, it was a reverse. Right. It's usually the, the the guys who got the young girls, but this time right. it was the, the, the older the older woman with the young guy, and uh, you know she had, she hadn't fixed him up, and, and, and uh, you know and, and and took him around, you know, this is kind of like her little boyfriend. So uh, uh -huh. he 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 learned the game from her basically, and uh, he went to D.C. and hooked up with, with Rafer, and uh, he started bringing Rafer back to L.A. and and I, I met Ray a few times, but we never. Uh, uh, we we didn't get tight. We wasn't tight. We wasn't really friends. I never, uh, I never dealt with Rayford directly. Uh, my my dealing through him was always through uh, through Melvin Butler, who I heard just caught a new case. You know, Melvin had just did like forty years, and now he he's back in trail again uh, on a, on a new bit. Man, that's terrible. <clears throat> um, yeah, I was. Um, I'm thinking about this the new episode that we watched last night and there we'll, we'll get into it kind of from the beginning, but there's, you know, there's a part of course where, um, Franklin and Louie and Jerome are talking and, and Louie, you know, breaks the news about, um, going behind his back and she's going to be dealing with Teddy directly. And they, Franklin starts talking about, you know, all the business, um, he's going to lose and all these other cities around the country. That was his idea to go spread out. And um, so that when we talk about D.C. and connections like that, I want to just kind of ask you a little bit about that. I mean, was that something that occurred with you during the course of, you know, your, you know, your dealings where you decided, you know, to spread the market out around the other other cities and, um, you know, and had people like you mentioned that would We'll go out to those cities to make the connections or what what can you tell us about that? Well it really it really came to it really came to us most of the time, you know, because everybody was hearing that LA had the cheapest uh the cheapest scope in in, in at, at one time in, in the country. Uh so so um they would just pull up, you know, people were pulling up looking for, for contacts, you know, looking for people with the uh with the with the plug. Uh yeah. But also, we started going out on our own as well. You know, we, we I started personally looking for people who have family members in, in different cities. Uh, like with me, I had my cousins out of Tyler, Texas, who uh, who I brought in, who were close to my age, and 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 we were pretty tight. Uh, I, I brought them in. But really, what happened is is that dad came out uh, on a visit to visit my mom, and when he saw you know, what was going on, uh, he went back and told his sons and uh, they jumped on the plane the next day and was out here. <laughs> came to see you, okay. Yeah, they came to see you. So, it, so, go ahead. No, I was gonna say any other particular, you know, cities um, that can't come to mind that were, you know. Yeah, we, 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 worked, we worked about, we had about, I don't know, I guess we had about seven, eight six different cities, you know, I worked, uh, uh, my cousins were Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, Tyler. Uh, we had Louisiana, uh, Cincinnati, uh, Atlanta, a little bit in Atlanta. I didn't do a whole lot in Atlanta, but I, I did a little bit in Atlanta. We had Oklahoma. Uh, we did Kansas City, St. Louis. Uh, where else? Did a little bit in Detroit. You know, Detroit was, 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 was a little tighter market. I didn't really like Detroit much, but I did do a little bit in Detroit. Um, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I think yeah. those those were all the cities that that I personally went in. But you know, I had guys that was going all over. Oh, Seattle! I worked Seattle, Washington too. I had, I had a, a girl in Seattle. Uh, but you know, the guys were going everywhere. You know, it wasn't a city in the country that the guys weren't touching. Got it. Got it. You uh, know, one of the, one of the things I said about cocaine is cocaine will travel. Hmm. You know, it will find its way. Hmm. Hitchhike, you know, bus, train, car, it's going to get there. Right, right. Um, so, yeah, let's let's get into the, the episode um, from last night. Um, title is Departures. Um, I guess that's, you know, signaling this sort of crossroads that the show seems to be reaching that, we still don't know how it's going to end up. Of course, you know, next week is the grand finale to the season where all will be revealed. Uh, although 
they are going to have to set things up for this sixth season that they announced coming up. So we know there's another season coming back. So whatever happens next week um, is going to have to set up, um, you know, a whole nother season. But um, so this one, uh, you know, (laughs) last week, of course, the wedding. And at the end, we see uh, Buckley, the police officer that Louis hired to do the hit on Kane sitting outside. And so when this show opens, uh, we're seeing basically what happened there. Buckley and uh, another police officer jump out on Kane and his guys, start shooting at them. They shoot him back. Kane runs, and Buckley chases him down, shoots him in the back a couple of times in the alley in the back. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, one of Buckley's partners, another police officer, gets killed. Um, so that's a big, obviously, uh, a big deal. A red flag. A, a, yeah. a big red flag. In what way would you say? Well, you know, a, a cop gets killed. That's major investigation. You know, um, yeah. A, a game banger get killed. Yeah, maybe investigation. But you know, when when you talk about a cop gets killed, uh, major, major, major investigation. And and you know, in in California, if if you involved with a crime, and uh, your 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 crimey gets killed in the commission of a crime, then you're responsible for his murder. So, so Buckley could be in, 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 in some real hot water right now. Yeah, well, he's not doing too good. We, we are seeing this episode. Um, he's definitely not doing too good. So, he looks uh, like the drug is getting the best of him right now. You know, yeah. uh, uh, he, his, 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 his self is, his, everything is deteriorating on him right now. It looks like he, he's going down fast. Right. Did we know and, he, was, he was using crack before this episode? I don't remember. If we saw him using crack or knew that. No, I didn't know he was using crack. I thought he was, was more on, on the booze. Uh, right. uh, they never they never actually showed him using the drug. Uh, yeah. Um, which is really weird, you know, you know, for a cop to be using the drug, which I'm sure some do have used the drugs. But uh, right. To be a narcotic agent and then get hooked on drugs is kind of like. Yeah. All of a sudden he's a crackhead. I mean, maybe it happened fast. Uh, but yeah, he's a crackhead. He's out there on the block uh, holding up the dealer for a twenty dollar rock. Uh, that's, how, <laughs> that's, how, that's how that's how desperate uh, Buckley has become. Yes, he didn't go. He didn't go to the uh, the, the, the 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 room, the storage room where they keep all the drugs at. You know, he could have mm-hmm. went in and skinned him a couple grams off, and nobody would have noticed it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that, that that has definitely been interesting with with Buckley. Uh, uh, even the way Louis has has been able to 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 really in, you know, to have him to to do a murder, you know, having a cop to do a murder. What's she paying like one hundred fifty thousand? I think she said or something like that, or fifty thousand. Yeah. Well, she gave him half, and he's looking for his other half uh, right now in this episode, and she don't want to give it to him because, of course, Kane didn't die. Kane uh, may be paralyzed, uh, but he looks like he's going to survive. Uh, we find that out. Um, so yeah, there's a. There's a dispute there over his money, and uh, he's really, you know. I'm wondering. I'm wondering uh, uh, if Kane's gonna gonna come in and testify against Buckley, you know, for what Buckley did to him. Hmm. You know, uh, uh, because some people, you know, uh, you know, people sell me, you know, because I testified against cops. Yeah. That that, that shot at me and planted drugs on me and stuff, and and some people say that 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 that's a form of snitching. You know, Hmm. I've been called a snitch because. Uh, you know, cops came in the courtroom and, and got on the witness stand and lied. And then I got on the witness stand and said, no, they lying that none of that happened. Uh, right. So I'm wondering how, how, what stance they're going to take on, on, uh, on Kane on this issue, you know, because right. uh, they're going to try to put Kane in jail as well. You know, Kane would, would go to trial for, uh, for the murder of a cop. Hmm. Trial so for Kane. All... Go ahead. No, I was going to say they're also, you know, of course they're bringing in, the whole kind of, you know, cop killing a, a unarmed black man's uh, storyline here because it didn't look like Kane had any any weapons on him. He was just running and Buckley just straight shot him in the back. And then, of course, when Buckley gives his report of what's happening, he's saying, oh, he had a gun. He turned around, fired me. And that's, uh, you know, that's when 
uh, when I shot him. So we'll see as the investigation goes on if if they, you know, show. Yeah, you know, I didn't really pay attention to that part, but you're absolutely correct. Because you could see Kane running. Clearly, his hands was was free. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. and he, he he never fired a shot. Uh, so so that's going to be interesting as well. Uh, uh, because those are big investigations as well. You know, when, when cops shoot at, at, at people, you know, I had cops shoot at me and they said that I turned around and fired at them. And and I was lucky that the investigation showed that uh, that I had never fired a shot. You know, they couldn't find any traces of, of, of me firing. So so right. uh, uh, Buckley got his hands full right there. I, I think that, that, that he's going to be he's going to be in a pickle. Yeah. You know, we didn't mention when he goes in to uh, the station to meet with his, his captain or whoever, uh, the captain basically tells him, look, man, uh, you know, you got to do a, a blood test. We're going to test you. Uh, you're on suspension. You got to turn your badge and your gun in. Um, but I guess, I don't know, they, they suspected he's on drugs. Um, I'm not really Well, he sure. looks bad. I mean, he looks bad. You know, when you look at a guy like that and you can see that, that, uh, that he's living on the edge, you know, he, he looks like he's about to crack. Right. You know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if if he doesn't have a breakdown himself. Right. And if they put him in jail, you know he's going to crack. Right. You know, he's done. But do uh, they normally, I mean, would you think they would need some type of more reason to drug test uh, an officer? Or if they just suspect that you're using drugs, they can they can make you. I, I never, you know, I, I never knew how, how that would happen. You know, I, I would only imagine, you know, if, if something that serious took place that they, they probably would go through. Yeah. You know well, he, those details. He did say the captain did say, "Well, look, if you don't cooperate, there's going to be criminal charges against you as well." So maybe that's what they're they're doing, just using that as the thing to make him. And it probably looks, fight. you know, when when they when they do their investigation, you know, they can pretty much tell uh, what took place. You know, like that's why I, w- I was saying earlier. You know, like w- you know, we stayed away from homicide. You know, we stayed away from that area because. I don't know if you've ever been to a homicide uh, uh, site where, where the cops investigating, but, uh, man, they find every shell. They go to the houses to find out where the bullets hit the house at. I mean, those guys do some, some really, really thorough investigations. And, and in my case, it, it worked out in my favor one time, you know, when the cops said I shot at them first. Uh, uh, that investigation benefited me. Uh, but a lot of times, if you're on the other end of the stick, you know, it, it'll work against you. Yeah. Yeah. So we see, um, you know, this is all basically happened the, the night of the wedding. So we're seeing everybody the day after the wedding. Um, the shooting with Kane has gone down. Everybody's recovering from tripping out off the uh, LSD uh, high that they all had from uh, eating the, the chocolate strawberries at the wedding. And Franklin's in bed um, and Leon shows up, of course, to to you know, talk about this this news that he learned about Kane, and um, you know he's 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 pissed. You know that that Louis lied to them and that they went behind their back to to set up Kane. But but Franklin says, "Hey man, you know, um, you know he tried to kill us, and Louis and Jerome decided they had to get back at him. And you know I don't I don't want to I don't want to get into a war with my family." Uh, there's more important things to me. I'm trying to, you know, get ready for this this baby we're having. And, you know, if you're going to you want to pursue this, you know, go ahead. But I'm not going to I'm not going to be there, Franklin says to, uh, to Leon. Well, you know about that whole scene, Dave, what really what really caught my attention was the fact of how lavish uh, uh, Franklin is living. And, and and then here his boy is his main man is living in the projects, man. That really like kind of got to me, you know, uh, uh, when Leon walked through the house and he was admiring uh, Franklin's house and he was like, man, you living up here. I, I don't, I don't remember the exact words, but basically he was saying you living in all of this lavish, you know, and, and, and everybody else is, is really, is really starving. You know, he, Leon, definitely not, not Louie and, 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 uh, and her husband, they both living pretty good as well. But Leon is, is pretty much still living in the projects, man. With with uh, and as we see, he was homeless. He didn't have, have nowhere to go. You know, I mean, why didn't he go to Franklin's house? And why Franklin didn't put him up when when he was going through all that stuff? You know, uh, just some of the things that 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 you know, when you see homies, they don't really 
they don't really carry it like that. You know, if the homie need it, you know, you give it to him. Yeah. I, I wanted to mention the, the book, you know, when Leon leaves, he's kind of, you know, pissed with Franklin's attitude about everything. He sees the book on the shelf, which is a book that he had told Franklin he should read. It, it's called The Wretched of the Earth. And he said, man, you didn't even, you know, look at this book. And he grabs it and takes it. Now, that book is interesting because um, it's about it, it's basically looking at the psychological and, and mental health uh, impacts of imperialism and colonialism. Um, and so it's another nod to this uh, issue of mental health that we've talked about and that the show keeps bringing up. And, you know, the idea that there's been, you know, an incredible amount of damage done uh, mentally to, you know, black folks dealing with the systemic racism conditions, you know, compounded yes. year, years after years after years. And, uh, you know, something that that's an important subject that that seems to finally be getting, <clears throat> you know, a little bit of public attention. But, um, you know, definitely one that needs to be pushed further, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, we, we definitely uh, it's definitely been a lot of trauma in the, in the, in the black community. Um, you know, uh, even with myself, you know, I, I mean, why should I know about murder scenes? You know, I've saw so many in my life. You know, I, I've witnessed so many people not actually get killed sometimes, but uh, shortly after their kill, you know, I'm, I'm able to be on the scene. And that was uh, 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 much too uh, frequent in, in, in South Central L.A., you know. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I think, Go ahead. And I think that too many kids, you know, in, 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 in these areas are experiencing these type of traumas. And, and you never know how it's going to affect you in life. You know, it, it affects everybody different. So, uh, but these are definitely traumas that, that, that uh, our kids are going through. Yeah, I want I want to ask you, you know, about yourself and like, ha have you ever done therapy? I've never had therapy. Have you no. thought about it or? Uh, no, I haven't never thought about it. Uh, you know, you know, Dave, you you think that 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 everything is good with you, you know, um, and a lot of times that's our problem is that we feel like we're okay, that 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 we're living a normal life, and and until you do something like therapy. Um, you you just never know, you know, and, and that, that that is probably something that I I might need to look into, you know. I mean, yeah, you know, to 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 do as much time in jail as I did, as well, you know, could be psychologically effective on on, on the person. Yeah, and and, and yeah. I did think about that before, you know, and and that that I may use work as my escape, you know, that that I don't have to deal with. Uh, mm all of the, the, the traumas and, and, and uh, the things that has happened in my life. So, you know, when I'm working, I don't think about those things, you know, you, you just kind of like focus on your goal and, and you're right. just going forward with it. Well, I, I got to say, that's another thing where we, you know, we have something in common, I think, because I, I've, I've spent a lot of time the last five years or so just kind of thinking about myself and everything I went through and, why I made different decisions and, um, you know, but one of the things I've, I've known about myself, I've always been, you know, since I really started the source, I, I became this crazy workaholic where, you know, I was the first one in the office, the last one to leave. I was there on the weekends. I mean, I was just, you know, obsessed with building this business. And, you know, even after I lost the source, it's kind of continued. I've, I've stayed pursuing you know, these dreams. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of it, I, I, I believe and I tell myself is because I think that the source was, uh, you know, we were building something that could really make a difference in the world, having a, a well, it did make It did make a difference, Dave. Well, thank you. Not could have. It made a difference, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, and I always wondered how you lost the source, you know, because I always... You know, from the outside, you're looking, it looks so like it was doing so well that, that everything was just perfect. But, you know, and that, that's from the outside and you never know the internal uh, happenings. But uh, I'm sure that there's other people who also wondered, man, how, how did this go wrong? You know, it was so 
it looked so perfect. You know, how could it go wrong? You know, uh, I, I thought you could have built one of the biggest record labels ever. You know, uh, uh, I don't know. I, that's just me looking from the yeah. outside. Well, I mean, I've talked about it a little bit, but, um, you know, there's a number of things. I mean, I think, um, you know, I had so much success from an early age and doing everything on my own and just everything was growing and working and building and building and overcoming obstacles. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, factors was uh, the decision I made to basically bet the farm on the Internet in the late 1990s. Uh, you know, the Source magazine was incredibly successful. The Source Awards uh, was, you know, now very successful television show. Uh, source hip hop hits, compilation albums, all these different things going on. Uh, but when the internet first started to really take off, um, you know, I, I believed that that was going to be the future and that it was a, a pathway to really uh, reaching the global market for hip hop in, in a, you know, fast and direct way. And, you know, I had opportunities to um, have other people put up the money for the source.com. But I learned at that point that I could take out a, a, a bank loan against the magazine business as collateral and, you know, fund everything myself. Because see, I, I always, from when I very started that very first yellow newsletter, I, I told myself, I'm going to build this thing without any investors, any capital. I'm going to just you know, take $200 that I used to start the source as a newsletter and turn it into this, you know, billion dollar company. And that's what I was doing. So I felt like, you know, I wanted to own everything and control everything rather than have partners. And, you know, that was, you know, that was a mistake uh, in, in retrospect to take that kind of a risk with the internet, obviously at a very early stage. And, um, you know, I was right in terms of where I saw the market going with the Internet and the digital space. But I, I moved too fast and, and too early. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was that was the biggest thing that led to the downfall. There was a bunch of other factors, of course, that that came into play. Um, but, um, you know, when you have that kind of success at a young age, you know, it kind of goes to your head and you feel like, you know, you you're right all the time, you know all the answers and, and maybe you don't listen to people around you um, the way that you, you know, maybe should. And so I had a lot of people advising me not to do this and not to do that. And, you know, I didn't listen to that advice and felt like I knew what I was doing because I had gotten so many things right the first 10 years or so. Um, so that's that's the short answer. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that that's definitely some more insight, you know, gives me uh, more of an idea of, of what happened because I always wondered, you know, uh, uh, how did the source go away? You know, because soon after you lost it, you know, it disappeared. It was only a matter of time before it just disappeared. Uh, yeah. Is it still? Is it still? They still doing it right now? Uh, the the source still exists, not as a magazine in a physical form, but um, there's a, a a lawyer that took it over, um, uh, Londell McMillan, who's been owning it and running it for years now. And they still have, you know, a, a, a website presence and a social media presence and things like that. But it's it's not, you know, what it what it was during, you know, my time of, of running it. And uh would you go back if they if they brought you back? <laughs> uh, I mean, I do think I could help make the source relevant again. And I I actually I've had that conversation with Londell a couple of times over the years, but he hasn't been open to it um, from what I've seen. I mean, I, I, we talked and he, he, he didn't follow up about it um, a few times. So, uh, you know, I, you know, you know, we got. I know what that's like. I know yeah. what that's like. <laughs> yeah. You go to guys and you offer to give them a hand and they don't take it and then you have to punish them. Yeah, well, that's why, you know, I, like I said, we, we got Breakbeat now. And Breakbeat, in my mind, the plan is, you know, this is the source in, in today's digital age because, you know, a lot of these companies that are coming from a traditional media space, whether they're magazines, newspapers, uh, cable television, 
radio stations, uh, all those forms of media that have been hugely successful for decades and decades, um, they're all pretty much finished. There's no real future for traditional media and everybody's trying to transition and find the right way to reinvent themselves in, in a digital form. But to me, it's very hard to do because there's a lot of baggage that you're carrying. There's, you know, the perception of your brand is already looked at a certain way because people know you as a magazine or as a cable channel. They don't know you as a, a social media or some other new streaming platform, uh, that type of thing. Um, I do think that there's a lot of untapped value in the source that I could still help bring to light. And, and hopefully one day I, I'll have the opportunity to do that. Um, God willing. Well, you know, uh, uh, I was I was in the airport a couple of weeks ago and I was looking at magazines and there's no magazines for hip hop anymore. You know, uh, after you guys came out, the vibe came out shortly after and XXL and, and none of those are around anymore either. I mean, maybe they are, but they're hard to find. You know, no. Mag uh, magazines are, are finished, Rick. Physical magazines are finished. You know, there's a few you still see out there on the newsstands. Um, but, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's dead in the water, that, that business, in, in my opinion. Um, so I don't think we'll see too many more hip hop magazines. But, um, we got Breakbeat. This is the digital magazine, the digital, you know, cable, radio, all rolled up into one. What we're what we're going to be doing as we continue to 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 build out this platform. For sure, um, for sure. So, um, I guess bring bringing it back to the show. Um, you know, Jerome and Louis are celebrating the wedding, getting ready for their honeymoon, but they know that the news is out there about, you know, what they did to set up Kane. They're going to have to deal with that. Uh, Veronique and Franklin, uh, you know, get together and Veronique saying, you know, she understands why Louis did what she did. And Franklin kind of says, yeah, you know, I get it too. It was the right thing with the wrong way, he says. Um, and And then he talks about wanting to leave town to clear his head, you know, come with me. Let's, let's get out of town. Um, I, I was shocked when he called himself a monster. Right. So yeah, they get in the plane, his private plane. He's back to, you know, that's a little bit of fun that he, he has had over uh, a few seasons. It looked like they went to Catalina Island. That looked like Catalina Island. It was at. definitely went somewhere, some exotic, yeah. uh, exotic location that he, he you know, it's a little Island right here on California. It's about, uh, about 40, 50 miles off the coast of California. Oh, okay. And, and okay. they call it Catalina Island. And uh, oh. that's where it looked like they was at, you know, when I looked at the island. And I used to take my boat over there, you know, I'd shoot over there. I had a boat, a speedboat, oh. and I would shoot over there every once in a while and go have yeah. lunch, you know, take a cheap nice? over there. It's nice. nice. It's like a little resort, you know, it's like a little resort. Ain't yeah. many, back then, it wasn't many people, you know. Uh, you know, the only way you can get there is by playing a boat. So, uh, mm -hmm. People would take their boats and go over there, and, and, and I would see how fast I could get over there on my speedboat. I had one of those 40-foot mm -hmm. speedboats, so I would see how fast I could get over there. Well, uh, but, yeah, that's yeah, what it looked like. That's the fun we're talking about, getting in that speedboat. And, oh, man, and, 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 that, thing was, that thing was so much fun, man. I bought it for my boy for his birthday, right? Uh -huh. uh, but I fell in love with it myself. <laughs> You know, you take a chick out on that boat and 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 it jumped waves like it, it like stay out the water. You know, you you can it had some little uh, things on the back of it and you put them down and, and the boat hydroplanes where it don't even really touch the water just like jumps ching 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 and it had two of those four fifty four um, uh, uh, motors in there with the with the with the uh, you know, all the souped up stuff, man. It's one of those, one of those, it's fast boat, like 75 miles, 80 miles an hour boat on the water, so. Right, right. Um, so yeah, that conversation he was having with Veronique on the island was was pretty interesting. Like you said, you know, he he's saying, you know, I really got to see myself for who I really am last night, you know, going through all that tripping and all these, you know, hallucinations and things I was I was thinking about. And uh, yeah, he said, uh, I, you know, there's no other way to, to, to define it. I'm, I've been a monster 
and I, I want to change, but is it, is it too late to change? You know? Yeah. She's, yeah. And then she started to tell him some of her baggage. She gave right. up a little bit of her baggage, you know? So, um, interesting time, you know, that they both came clean with each other. Um, I was thinking when, when he was doing all that, that he was thinking about getting out the game. You know, those are the kind of things that, that, that really make you think about a quit, you know, sure. where, where you're not going to sell dope no more. Like, right. Well, we, um, we see jumping ahead to the end, you know, that last scene with Teddy. I mean, that's what he says. He says he's leaving now. Does that mean he's just leaving Teddy and he's going to try to stay in the game? Or, you know, does that mean he's trying to get out of the game permanently? And we yeah, know we, we kind of he kind of felt, you know, from talking to Teddy, he kind of felt defeated, you know, telling Teddy that he took his biggest customers, which what Teddy Teddy did really is 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 it's pretty vicious, you know, to take somebody's cut. I mean, you know, you take your boy's biggest customer. That's like taking his girl, you know, like, mm -hmm. damn, man, you had sex with my wife. man. You yeah. know, like, damn, buddy. You know, like, what else you going to do? You know, yeah, uh, well. uh, so that was pretty major. But for, 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 for him, to, you know find out that that his man you know has has taken and then he he, he kind of said that he knew teddy killed his daddy hmm. well we see you know that's what they're setting us up for here i mean you know because at first like we were talking about franklin's like oh you know it's cool that they killed kane he wasn't mad leon was pissed and wanted to you know do something about it but franklin was going to let that slide but when he goes to see uh jerome and louis at first everything's all oh you know great wedding you know, all this good stuff. I'm sorry. I, I was wrong. Franklin's telling them. But then when when uh, Louie drops the bombshell that she's uh, been speaking to Teddy and is going to be dealing with him, he's he's pissed. Like you said, it's like somebody uh, had sex with his girl. He was he was mad. He walked out. He said, you know, you, you wanted to, to kind of be in the front. Now. Now you got it. And good luck. You know, good luck. It's not so so easy handling what's going to come with with the territory and uh we see that same kind of anger within him when he sees teddy finally at the end as well for so you know he really feels you know bad that that his they've been cut they cut his throat and we don't know what that means he's he, he's well, gonna then he do shakes something. teddy's hand though he shakes teddy's hand real real friendly like like it's all good you know like right that right. was that, that was surprising and he stuck his hand out and then Teddy didn't take his hand immediately. You know, Teddy was kind of standoffish. So that, right. was, that was interesting. Yeah, well, to, to me, to me, to me, they they both have something up their sleeve. We already know Teddy's been been sort of preparing for this. You know, Teddy uh has gone in and, you know, done all that stuff to uh attack Franklin's bank accounts uh so that he can cripple him financially. And, you know, it seems like that's what we're gonna see you know, next week. And I, I just felt like Franklin and, and Teddy were just, you know, kind of posturing nice, but they both got, because Franklin, I think, wants some, some get back, it seems like. And uh, uh, we'll see, we do see a little of that um, when they show the previews for, for next week. Again, I, I don't know if you stayed on long enough to watch the previews uh, of next week's show, but um, there's a scene where you see Franklin walking with uh, some of Kane's guys, like do heading somewhere together. So to me, it seems like Franklin is going to go to Kane and basically say, look, you know, Louis and Jerome sold, sold us out, set you up, and I wasn't with it. Now, I'm, you know, let's get back at them somehow. It's, that could be one of the things uh, that happens. Wow. Um, if, he, if he does that, that's, now that's vicious. Yeah, if he can, if he can go with Kane and have Kane to attack his uncle, and 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 Louis, that's going to be vicious. They they also show a scene very quickly, but they show Franklin pulling a gun on Louis, on Auntie Louis, putting the, pulling the gun out to her, and basically saying, you know, um, you know, you you know, you did this, you did this to yourself, something something to to that effect so he's he looks like franklin's gonna go a little bit wild go crazy in this last episode of the season yeah that's gonna be crazy 
Because I, I, I would have been thinking more so, you know, with him confessing to to uh to his girl, you know, that he was a monster, that 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 he's gonna calm down and, and, and try to be especially with all the money they got, you know, like like it ain't like you don't have enough money to settle down, you know, you got enough money now where you can right. settle down with your girl and, and, and maybe enjoy life, you know, stay up in that big old nice condo on Wilshire Boulevard. Right. You know. <laughs> but but again, the thing that may push him over that edge is when he finds out Teddy has bankrupted him. You know, when he finds out all his money is gone, they show that too. He's saying something, you know, about you know all the money's gone, and you know, so he's getting you know that that pushed him even further over the edge. You know, when yeah, he, but he had out. millions, he had millions in the stash places. Remember when you walk in the stash place, you see all that money stacked up in in, in on 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 the uh, right. on the racks. You know. Right. That's true. He could have got the banks, but he didn't get that cash, you know, with all that cocaine that that he, that he had up in there. So I don't know. It, it, it's going to be wild. But I don't see how Teddy could have totally bankrupted him with, with all the cash that he had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I want to talk about uh, the guy, Ruben, the Spanish guy that's been plotting with Sissy on everybody. Um, she goes back to see him after the, you know, confrontation they had at the wedding where she kind of flipped flipped out on him. Um, and, uh, you know, she's sort of saying, look, you know, she was on the drugs too. So she was a little bit wild, but he's basically telling her, he's like, look, you know, I'm your only hope if you want to save your son. Um, and if you want to, he's still talking about killing Teddy. Um, and, uh, he's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta fully cooperate. And, uh, we're already investigating, Avi and Oso, he tells her, because they were at the wedding, and I guess they've been identified now. I'm not sure why, you know, they could have couldn't have been doing that already. But uh, we do see Ruben and an associate break into Avi's uh, spot, and they're trying to find evidence. And of course, Avi pops out on him, pulls a gun on him. Uh, they try to rush him. He shoots. Looks like he shoots the the guy with him, and then him and Ruben have a have a struggle and, and Ruben ends up cracking him over the head with a bottle and, and knocking him out. So we don't know exactly what happens to Avi. Um, but where that's all going to go, where is Ruben and Sissy? Well, we still haven't found out who Ruben is, though. We don't, you're right. They, oh, say, they still haven't told us what agency he works for or, or who is he or what he, you know, why he why he's even involved. Right. You know, I, I know Sissy has been soliciting him to 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 get Teddy, but uh, they don't show what is his interest in in this whole thing because they never show what Sissy tried to pay him any money or anything. You know, it's like he's just doing this voluntarily. Right. Right. So yeah, they don't show that DEA agent this this episode, the one that was in the truck listening, that I was saying last week that I thought that um, uh, what's his Ruben. name. No, the um, the the uh, the gangster who put the the LSD in the chocolate, um, Scully. 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 I, I was saying I think Scully might have turned informant, um, but we'll see if if that's you know if Ruben and, and the DA. And you know what's crazy? So Scully's that. get back is that he put LSD in the in the drink. That's his get back for, yeah, for killing his girl and, and killing yeah. his girl and his baby. You know he, he's a mad killer. And, and his get back is to put LSD in, in their drink, and, and for no reason. I mean, you know, when I when I first thought when I first saw it, and I thought that he was doing that. I thought he was going to drug him so he could kidnap him or right. you know, take him. Take him well, see, 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 why I thought it was all connected is because I'm thinking that Ruben and you know wanted to make everybody like talk freely. He was trying to get information out of people. So if he has them all on LSD. And he goes around, he starts talking to him, you know, he can get him to tell him everything, which he kind of did a little bit of that. So that's why I thought it was connected. Um, and I guess we'll, you know, we'll we'll find out, um, you know, next week. A lot of loose ends, a lot of loose ends. They're going to leave this, 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 this season is going to be left with a lot of unanswered questions. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. Yeah. Um, Two other things I want to get into before we um, before we wrap up, um, you know, one, you know, at that very ending um, when uh, Franklin and Teddy are, are at the diner, um, 
Franklin says something, you know, they're basically talking about, you know, what this is all about, supposedly. This is about America winning a war. We saw that also when, when Teddy went to go see Avi earlier in the show, and he said, look, man, I'm going to need extra guns. I'm going to need three times as many guns. We're about to, you know, uh, finish the Sandinistas. We're going to break their back you know, these next few months, I need to know if you can come through with all these guns. We're going to bring this war to an end. Um, and uh, and then Franklin and Teddy are kind of talking about the same thing. Oh, you know, Franklin says, oh, you know, well, we we were just doing this for to be patriotic. Um, and he says, maybe nobody will ever know that a white boy from Kansas and a black boy from South Central changed the course of history forever. Uh, so. You know, I thought that was, you know, an ode to you, of course, in terms of, you know, your importance in our history that, that we've talked about. And I know I've talked about on this podcast before, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. What, what Did you catch that? And what, what did you think of that? Yeah, I caught, I caught that. I caught that. I was like, uh, if, that, if they're not talking about my story, what are they talking about? Uh, so, so yeah, I definitely, I definitely caught a hold of that. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think Franklin said that, that he sold enough dope to fund a couple wars. He, he said he made him 56 million in three years. Yeah. To go towards the war. Um, so the last thing that I do want to ask you about, um, with, uh, with Leon, again, we're continuing to hear, you know, Leon is totally kind of change his tune about, you know, he's for the people now and he's really concerned about what's being done to his people, uh, the effects of, of crack and, and, you know, the systemic racism and everything. And, you know, he wants to take, uh, take his girl, um, you know, over to Africa or Europe, he says, to get away and think about his future and what he can do to, you know, to help his people. And, and and we also heard Franklin say when he's on that island with Veronique, he used the word plague, you know, that, hey, I brought a plague on my people, something to, to that effect. Um, so I wanted to, you know, to ask you about that. I mean, we might have talked about it a little bit before, but, you know, at what point in your life did you begin to think about, you know, what the impact Crack was having on the black community and become a person that wanted to, you know, do something about it. I mean, I, you know, what, how, would you, how, how would you describe that, that transition for yourself? Well, well, you know, when, when, when I found out that, that cocaine was addictive, because I didn't, I didn't really believe that cocaine was addictive when I first started, you know, uh, uh, like I said, all the people that was getting high was was the movers and the shakers, you know, the people who I wanted to be like. So when when I first started, I didn't know that it, it had the effect that it was going to have on everybody, you know, that uh, people would be giving their last 20s and 30s up to, to, to get high. So I would say around 84, 85, I started to see addiction. You know, I started to see people who would, you know, uh, sell their bodies to get a hit sell all of the TVs and everything. And I, I started rethinking my position at that time. Uh, but it still took some time, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to quit because you, you, you're, you're under the assumption that if you don't do it, somebody else will. Mm -hmm. So I might as well be the one to get that money. So it, it still took me a while after, uh, uh, I started to recognize the destruction that it was causing in the community. Uh, it still took me a while to come to my senses. Right. But you, you know, in a lot of ways, you've dedicated your life, you know, since, since then to really trying to do things to empower the community. Um, Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I, I don't feel that, 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 that drugs is the, is, is the problem really. Uh, it's the inability to think, the inability to decide 
should I use drugs or should I not use drugs? Should I take that first hit or should I not take that first hit? I think those are the, the things that are the most important because uh, uh, once people understand that they shouldn't be using drugs because drugs are no good for them, then you don't have to worry about drugs anymore because they're not going to take them. Hmm. Well, um, on that note, I think we should uh, wrap up our show for the day and want to thank uh, all of our fans and listeners and viewers for continuing to support uh, Rick and myself with After the Snow and, and uh, the whole Breakbeat family. Shout out to Don't Call Me White Girl. Shout out to Chris Styles, Tra- Trapping Anonymous, uh, Karen Mayo and some big names that we'll be announcing soon that are joining the Breakbeat family. Um, and uh, so, yeah, this is After the Snow. Uh, you can find us on social media, at Breakbeat Media, on Instagram and breakbeatmedia.com, our website. Uh, you can find me at, at the real Dave Mays on Instagram and uh, at Freeway Ricky Ross or at Freeway Ricky. Always get Freeway Ricky. Freeway Ricky on Instagram and Freeway Rick Ross on Facebook. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, um, yeah, thanks, everybody. We'll see y'all next week Appreciate for, y'all. for that final episode. Can't wait. Yes, come back. Let's do next week. Hopefully the show is better. Um, peace to y'all. Peace.